If you have it, say amen. amen. Psalms 100, 3 and 4. In verse 4 it say, know that the Lord is God. Yeah. We've heard a lot of it say, I've heard for a lot of times it said, know that the Lord is good. Yeah. That's not what the scripture said. It said, know that the Lord is God. Yeah. It is he that have made us yeah. Yeah. and not we ourselves. Yeah. We are his people. Yeah. We are his people. Yeah. Yeah. The sheep of his pasture. Yes. Everyone in here yes. are God's sheep. Yes. We might not be in the same pasture, but we are God's people. Yes. And we're the sheep of his pasture. Yes. Yes. And then verse 4 says, enter into his gates uh -huh. yes. with thanksgiving. Thank you, Lord. And into his courts with praise. Yes. Yes. Be thankful unto him yes. and bless his name. Yes. In First Thessalonians, it says, in everything, yes. give things. Yes. Not some things, but in everything. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Now you know when we say everything evil, we say, even the tough times, the rough times, the bad times, yes. Said, yes. Because for everything we have been through, God has brought us out. And for everything that he carried us through, that was a purpose, invention. Now, there are things in our lives that we take for granted. One, I will start by being, having an education. It's compulsory that all children of a certain age get an education. That's, right. that's a part of this country. That's something that's been true in this country forever that I have known about. We never thought that an education was to be a blessing, but it is. We never thought it as being blessing because if we didn't have an education, or if we didn't be able to read a function, look how many things we would miss out in life. And you know, I even look at, I think more now that I'm older, about people going the wrong way, on the freeway, uh, the exits, because sometimes some of them can't read. That's right. They don't even know which way they're going. And we said they caused those people to lose their life. They might have, but it might have not been intentional. And I don't believe any of it was ever intentional. But because they didn't get the education they needed to be able to function. Amen. And then I thought about, we thought about how blessed we are to have teachers who care for our growth. Amen. Who cared for them? Teachers that gave their time, their lives, their livelihood. They stayed after school preparing for the next day. They did things to make you be able to function in life. And you and all you say, oh well, all they doing is because they get a check in a and off in the summer. No, it's more to it than that. They did it because they loved you. They did it because they wanted you to have the best. They did it because they want to look back and say, I had a part in their life. I see people now every day, and they'll say, Miss Casper, do you remember me? And I look at them, and sometimes I do it, sometimes I don't. Well, you know, I, you taught me in such and such a grade. Or now, I am, now I'm a, a nurse. Now I'm teaching myself. Now I'm doing other things. I have a career. I'm a pastor, a minister. Yeah. These are people whose lives the teachers talk, Amen. that they touch. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. These are people that were important in your life All because right. we All take right. it for granted. But these people were important. It wasn't just the money and the summer vacation. It's about we grew up to realize, we have to realize that all these things that, I, that we have been given is not rights, but they're privileges. I realize that being literate is not a right, it's a gift. 
Yes, it is. I really realize that there are a lot of wars and rumors of wars and violence and all kinds of things going on in the world. Yes. But we are blessed to live in a country where all of this turmoil is not next to, door to us. Amen. Right. It's not in our city. Amen. It's not in our state. Thank you. God has protected us. Yes. And he did it because he loved us. Yes. And I even think about, you know, sometimes we say that um, there are people, you know, we say sometimes about, do you have your five senses? Mm -hmm. You know, we make a joke about it. Use your five senses. Yeah. You know, yeah. Sometimes we don't have our five senses. Right. But let's thank God, those of us who do, we have our five senses. Yeah. Because without them, we couldn't do a lot of things. Yeah. Sometimes, like for instance, these are a few things that we are thankful for. Your parents. Yeah. For giving birth to you. Yeah. If it were not for them, there would be no you. Right. And your friends for being compassionate in life, encouraging you. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes a real friend will stick with you. They say a real friend sticks closer than a brother. Yeah. And you don't have a lot of them. Take it from me. You don't have a lot of them. You might have one or two good yeah. real friends in a lifetime. But you trust them. If you got one, cherish them. Yeah, Amen. Yeah, yeah. And then we have, we're thankful for a sense of sight. For letting us see the colors and lives of things that's all around us. Amen. A sense of hearing. The voices of people. The music that we listen to. We talk about our kids with this loud bang, bang, banging noise. But at least, thank God, they can hear. If their hearing might be damaged over the years, but right now, they can hear. A sense of touch. For feeling the texture of things and being able to touch them and see how it feels. Our clothes, we can tell the difference in cotton and linen and wool. Right. But we couldn't do that if we didn't have a sense of touch. Yeah. 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 Right. The sense of smell, for to be able to smell our food, to tell whether it's fresh or old or, or not something that you would want to eat, amen? Right. amen? The perfumes that make you smell good, uh -huh. the flowers that grow in the spring, yeah. yes. these are all things that God has blessed us yeah. with. Yeah. And your speech. The ability to express yourself. Amen. Just think what it would be like if we couldn't talk. Wow. And just think if, it, uh, if you have lost many of your senses that you weren't able to use. Your heart for pumping blood all over the body. You know, I remember Papa used to say all the time when they said when someone had passed away or died, and he said they died. Oh, they they somebody said well maybe. They died with uh, cancer or uh, this, uh, maybe they died from a lung disease. He said, no, they died from a heart attack because their heart stopped pumping. Their heart stopped working. So all of them who died, died from a heart attack because their heart stopped working. <laughs> and when you think about that, that's a true fact. Amen. Amen. Your hands, your hands are so important because you can type on your computer. You can flip the pages in a book. Yes. Yes. And you can hold the hands of your loved one. Oh, yes. And then your legs for letting you walk, run, yes. play sports that you love, and to curl up on the couch or in a chair to be comfortable in your seat. These legs. I woke up this morning and mine was very stiff. I said, and, and as, as um, Melinda said, the devil you defeated. I said, you refused. You, I refuse to let you afflict my legs. I, you know, I've fallen so many times, so there's no telling what's wrong with these legs. But today, these legs are gonna work. So I'm, I'm grateful. Amen. 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 And we thank you, Lord, for oxygen. Yes. For making life possible. Just think what would happen if we could in a place where we couldn't breathe. We would suffocate and die. Right. For the internet. For connecting us with others despite the physical space between us. You know, you, now we used to have to run to write a letter, uh, make a phone call, but now people don't even hardly write letters anymore. I doubt if the post right. people really sell that many stamps anymore. Because nobody, everybody's using what? The internet. The internet and the cell phone. Amen. 
The mobile phones make us be able to make contact with each other without having to go to the house. That's know? right. And then sometimes we say we will almost even stop talking until we we started texting most of the time. Yeah. And then yeah. we text so much that we don't even talk anymore. Mm -hmm. We just yeah. text people. Yeah. And I say sometimes when people don't want to talk to you, they text you. Yeah. Right. So yeah. sometimes yeah. that might be the yeah. case and it might not. And then technology for making possible the things that we have. Uh -huh. The movies, even that you go to, whether they're good or bad, they are providing a source of entertainment. Mm -hmm. Books for adding wisdom to your life. Shoes for protecting our feet when you're in or when you're out. Uh -huh. Your bed for you to sleep comfortably in every night. Yes. Yes. For your home, for yes. a place that you can call home. Yes. For life, for giving you the chance to experience yes. the things that are to come. All right. Now I'm gonna talk about a few negative things that have happened in my life, but they turn out positive. All right. As I grew up as a little kid, I was anemic. Yes. I was puny. Yes. Had long legs and long arms and was puny. And I had to go and take iron shots every week because I was anemic. Yes. And then the next day, I, 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 but I lived through that. Yes. I felt rejected by my parents because they both, they divorced and they went their separate ways and they took on new lives, new families and more children that I was not a part of. I suffered with migraine headaches for 30 to 40 years. Amen. 30 or 40 Amen. years. Ever since I was married, I had migraine headaches. I could go in the room and my kids, I thank God that he watched over them along with Pastor. Because when I got into that deep sleep, I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know who was there. I didn't know what was happening. Amen. But I survived. One day, I woke up, I don't know how many years ago, but I haven't had a migraine, I know, in at least three years. And I thank God, I thank God for that. That's not a good feeling. If you ever feel them, when it gets so severe, you can't keep anything on your stomach. The light bothers you and all of this. But God and my husband watched over my children. All right, all right. He took care of them and he protected them. Then the devil wasn't satisfied with that. He came along with vertigo. Well, I should uh, stagger and fall and stumble, and that's probably there, probably my leg. But I said, Devil, you're alive. I'm going to get up. You might have took me out of my little high heel shoes, but I can still walk. And I still got shoes on my feet. I might stumble, but I don't stumble like I used to. But he healed me then. Then I had financial disasters. You know, all of us have that sometimes in our life. All of us have periods in our life where we don't know what we're going to do and where is it coming from. But one day, you know, I used to hear people testify about they got these big chicks and all this thing. I said, sure, sure, I did. But until it happened to me. See, sometimes we don't believe things until it happened to us. But in a point of disaster, we got received a check for a nice little amount where we had overpaid. Amen. That took care of the circumstance. And then I went even through bouts of depression. You get frustrated about what you can't do. Yeah. When you, you know, your body, your health, you know, yeah. and all. Yeah. But still, God brought me through. Yeah. 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 And then there were church issues, and there were being accepted, and there were critics and all that. You, all of that, I don't care what you say. You can believe and trust God, but you still are human. Yeah. You experience these things. All right. yeah. You know, but, but even so, God brought me through. But now here are a few of my blessings. He improved my health. Yeah. 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 I had loving parents yeah. who, who loved and grandparents who loved me, protected me, and spoiled me. All right. All right. I no longer suffer with migraine headaches. All right. All right. I, I remember one day I, when I came to Golden Gate, I said, I wish I, I would see the ladies dressed up and going to these fashionable affairs, and they were in their mink coats and all this and that and the other. And I said, you know, I wish I had a mink coat. I think this is material stuff. You hear? Okay. I said, I wish I had a mink coat. And the God touched, I don't know how or whether I told her or whatever happened. 
But I told Sister Moore, little Lorene Moore, yeah. she got a group of ladies together, and they bought me a long new coat. And so you see, when Sister Bobby flat yeah. around and looked important, you had a hand in that. Yeah. Yeah. And then I went on to say, now nah, you know how you get greedy. Yeah. I said, I wish I had a short me come. Now I got a long one. Man, I want a short. And thank God, I, to, I don't know what I told his sister, but still, a lady in this church, you might not know, and you might not ever know, and I'll never tell you. A lady in this church gave me a short meat coat, and I had to go with it. And that was the best. And then I even said, I said, that, that was, I said, that those, these are material blessings here. Okay. Then I went on, and I said, there are times, you know, when we have special affairs and things, I might not can buy everything I want when I need and when I want it, because everybody look at you, they think about because you have on nice shoes, nice clothes, hat and clothes, and drive a big car, live in a little house, that you got it. Everybody, don't. Everybody, you look at that, don't. You know. One thing you can always say about black people, you'll never know how poor they are by looking at that. Because all you have to do is give them a bath, fix their hair, and put them in some nice clothes, and you'll never know the thing you do. I have this, uh, little friend in uh, Dallas who's a little, I say she's an Indian, I don't know what the, but I think Sister Wilson introduced me to her. She has a retail shop, and so we go over there sometimes, and I tell her what I want, and I say, now, I don't have no money today. Oh, Miss Bobby, go on. You pay, you pay, and I mean, she means that. It might take me a year to pay her, but I pay her. And she has nerve enough to keep calling me to come back for more, and I have to pay for my but that's a, fa a favor. Yes. And it shows you how God can give you favor. Yes. And then I think the big pastor was laughing and talking one day. We was talking about that old P.T. Cruz out there that uh, we call, well, I call her Miss Daisy. <laughs> Miss Daisy is 13 years old. Miss Daisy is 13 years old. And Miss Daisy will start acting up and act like she didn't want to go anymore, and you know, and. We said, well, the Cadillac is 10 years old, so it's still looking pretty good and it's running. But we said, well, we're not going to buy a car because we can't handle a car. No, you know, we, can't, we cannot handle another bill, you know. Yeah, right. But anyway, Miss Daisy was chuckling along, and the pastor took her to the Chrysler house, and they told him more than $2,000 or more to fix it. And then I can't remember who it was that looked at the blue book and said, that car is not even worth $2,000. <laughs> So Pastor said, Pastor said, well, yeah, I guess I'm not going to put the money in. Maybe I can find somebody. And I think one of the brothers told him of uh, some uh, repairer that took it. Took it and fixed it for about $500. Miss yeah. right. Daisy been running. Miss yes. 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 Daisy goes everywhere. Miss Daisy even goes yeah. down anywhere else she want to go. Yeah. Anyway. Same thing about black girl. But I'm showing you how God will preserve. How God will bless you. How you can, if you live for him. And you do, and you don't cheat him. Out of all this stuff, we have materialistic. God has always been at the top of my list. I retired from the school. But I never, I don't care what it, I've always given above, my tithes above what my money is. Yeah. Cause they say the more you give, the, the more God will give you. you. Yeah. Yeah. I never missed it. If I missed it, right. you can ask the finance people, I'll bring it that next Sunday. Yeah. Right. If I forgot my checkbook, I'll give it to them or either take it to one of them's house the next yeah. day. Because I thank God for all of this. Yeah. Yeah. I thank God. I thank God for a husband, yes. children, yes. and grandchildren, and a family who love and care for me. Yes. I thank God for a church that shows love and support to me. Yes. And most of all, I thank God that God, a God who loves me, protects me, and shows me unconditional love. Yes. Yes. Now, I've been discouraged, dejected, my spirits were low disillusioned, felt like my body was separated from me. But sometimes life 
leaves us feeling downtrodden. We may be struggling financially or even with health issues. Regardless of our circumstances, God has blessed us with every spiritual blessing that we need. Yeah. Yeah. We're not lacking anything in the heavenly realm. So count the spiritual blessings that are at your disposal. Yeah. God guides our minds and comforts our hearts. Yeah. Earthly trials are temporary, yeah. but spiritual blessings are forever. Yeah. Gratitude is a powerful expression <clears throat> of love and it can perform miracles in your life. Yeah. Yeah. There are countless benefits yeah. associated with being grateful. Yeah. Among these, gratitude has been linked to happiness yeah. and life satisfaction. Yeah. Giving thanks is one of the most powerful ways there is to increase your well-being. It will help you shift your focus from the things you lack to the abundance that he has already yes, presented yes, you with. Yes. You may say grace before a meal. That's all right, too. Yes. But I say grace, and when I get up in the morning, I say, let's me and you, God, have our quiet time. Yes. I find I have my spot that I go. I don't even turn my cell phone on right. until I finish my quiet time with the Lord. I want to thank you. Yes. I want to thank him for waking Amen. me up. Yes. I want to thank him for the day I woke up. I knew where I was. I knew who I was. And most of all, I knew whose I was. Yes. Yes. Now, can you see, even though, let us be grateful for the people who help make us happy. Amen. Gratitude can transform common days into thanksgiving. Yes. Turn routine joy, I mean, turn routine jobs into joy. Sometimes we work on jobs and we are miserable. Yes, if I, can, I can't wait till 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock, 3 o'clock, whatever o'clock, to get out of here, to get up out of here. And there are people on your jobs who, whose main objective is to make you miserable. There are people who are so unhappy that they are not happy until they're making somebody else unhappy. And it's because of them. So I don't, I don't even talk about it. I don't even say negative things about it. I always say, I always say there's a reason. Yeah. And my kids say to her, Mama, you always try to analyze everything. Oh, yeah. you know? But this is true. Yeah, and and for every action, yeah. for every reaction, yeah. there's an action. Yeah. Right? For every action. For every action, there's a reaction. Yeah. Right, right. And sometimes people reacting out of hurt. Yep. They're hurt, reacting out of pain. Yes, ma'am. They're reacting out of fear. They are acting yeah. out of just disgust. Don't know what's going to happen next. You're looking, standing there wondering, Lord, <coughs> where am I going to go from here? How am I going to do this? How am I going to pay this bill? How am I? But many times, sometimes I don't know either. But I said, God, between now and morning. I want you to fix something. I want you to do something. And I do believe you're going to be something for me. I believe it. I believe it with all my heart that my God will supply all my needs. My God will take over when we can't handle it. And like I said, we don't see it, but we can feel it. We can feel his presence. We can't see it, but we know he's there. And that's the thing about it. Don't let the devil cheat you out of being faithful to God. Yeah, yeah. Don't let the devil cheat you out of a friendship, <laughs> a relationship, yeah. because she didn't call me, so I'm not going to call her. I called her first, and she, uh -huh. she didn't call me back. Well, I called her three or four times. You know the next time I'll call her. You, know, you don't never know why they didn't call you back. You don't never know what happened. You, you see her, she went up there, and sharp as she is, and put a dollar in the offering. Mm -hmm. How do you don't know? Maybe that was a that maybe that was all they had. That's right. That's right. You know, you just think about when we say things, when we say things about people. You know, and I and don't misunderstand me. I'm guilty. I said some things too. But as I grew older, and God taught me and matured me, I learned to think of a lot of things before I said it. I learned to thank God for the little things. For the 
thank God for what I don't have. The old raggedy car, the beat up clothes, or this, that, the other. Yeah, I thank God when the pastor said we laughed about it, when all we had was a bedroom suit, a card table, and a chair. Well, <laughs> but we had a roof over our head. Nobody said, you? Yes. Yes. A bed, a chair, and a card table. And a refrigerator with some water and juice. <laughs> and thank God, one day, he blessed me. And he didn't bless me because I was the important. He blessed me because he loved me. He blessed me because I was faithful. He blessed me because I put him first. I didn't say, after I do all of this, God, here's what I'm going to give you. Here's what I'm going to do for you. I didn't sit up at home and say what could be doing or what they should be doing when I could be there doing it too. Yeah, right. Or I could be helping make it happen. Yeah. You know, we have to think about, think about how good God has been to us. Yeah. Think about what he's done for us. Yeah. Think about what he's brought us out of. Yeah. And right now, some of us are sitting here now wondering about some things, That's some right. issues that you got to deal with. Yeah. Wondering what you're going to do about this. Yeah. Wondering what's going to happen tomorrow. Wondering about our children. And you know, the worst people in the world are parents. Y'all think that the kids think we bad, but you don't know. Mama and daddy is struggling and worried about you until the end. They never give up. I don't care what happened to you. I don't care what prison door or jailhouse they throw you in. Mama is coming. You hear me? Be grateful. Be grateful for what you have. You know, I was looking at, um, I think it's the blood, the, what's the blood series, the movie we were looking at? Blue Blood. We were looking at Blue Blood one day. And, uh, the, you know, the older daughter, I think some of you might have seen it before. Her, her daughter was about 15 or 16, and she wanted to go to, to a college, you know, affair. And her mother was just having all kinds of fits because she just thought she was too young and she shouldn't. And so she, she went to the grandfather and she thought he was going to help her out, you know. And he wouldn't say that. He said he wasn't in that, you know. So then after it came around, uh, it eventually, the, the, to make a long story short, she ended up getting a chance to go and her mother let her go. And so that night while she was out, the grandpa was downstairs sitting in a chair with his book. The mama was sitting in the other chair, you know, with her little papers or something. They both sitting there waiting, waiting for her to come home, you know. You know. And then when they heard the car, the lights turn in the driveway, they both went upstairs and jumped in the bed. <laughs> <laughs> and so the daughter said, Daddy, you didn't do that for me. He said, yes, we did. He said, your mother and I would sit there. We couldn't go to bed. And we couldn't sleep until you were in the house. Right. And when you got in, we went upstairs just like we did it with the bed. We acted just like we were so asleep, you know. And this, this is true. This is like, you know, we, you think that, hey, I'm okay. It's okay. It might be. But sometimes you, as young people, your parents can see things that you will never see. Right. And not only do they see them, but they've experienced them. Right. Sometimes they've gone through some things, and everything that they have an experience, they know somebody who has. Right. So they're not just speaking off the top of their head. Sometimes they tell you this because they don't want this to happen to you. We as adults, even parents, some mistakes we made, we can't go back and correct them. But we can't help you. Right, right. You can't help make sure that you don't do the same thing. Yeah. So we just have so much to be grateful for. Good, I say I thank God for it. I had something else that I wanted to show, but it didn't work. But we said the devil is defeated. Yeah. He's going on anyhow. Yeah. But I want to share this little poem with you before I close. It says, Lord, I am grateful. God, how can I say thanks for all you've done for me? For standing beside me on the lonely road of fear, for lifting me out of the dry valley of despair, for holding me close during the thundering storms of doubt. Lord, I'm grateful. Yes. For walking before me through the dark forest of fear, dread, and anxiety, for carrying me over the river of worry, for bathing me in the fountain of peace. Yes. Lord, yes. I'm grateful. Yes, I am. For clothing me 
with the robe of your forgiveness. Yes. For covering me with the veil of your mercy. Yes. For pouring over me the perfume of hope. Lord, I'm grateful. Yes. And that maybe some of you today who might have had some of these same experiences in life. Sometimes we take for granted and we take things for granted and we don't even know how blessed we are. Right. We don't, we, we just, we just say, I don't have this. I don't have right. that. I want this. I won't have, I want that. But then God sometimes wants us to just to be grateful for what we have. Amen. As the song say, just be grateful. Yes. Yes. Grateful for the things that you have. Right, and grateful for the things that he's done for us. Yeah. Just be grateful, Lord. Be grateful. Because one thing about it, when you're talking and making complaints about yours, there are 20 uh, millions of more people who are crying and, and worse out than you. Always remember, no matter what's going on with you, no matter how bad it is with you, there's somebody that's worse off than you. We're standing all over the building. We're standing. Let's give my first lady a big hand of appreciation. Lots of love, lots of wisdom, lots of concern for her children. She talked a lot about God, the Father. He is God, the Father. I'm standing today because I want to tell you that he's not just satisfied being the father. He wants to be your father. Maybe you don't know him in the pardon of your sin. The altar workers are coming. How can I say thank you, Lord? Come on.